So what we just witnessed at Martinsville Speedway may well be the greatest moment in NASCAR history, but it may be the greatest moment that can never happen again, and Ross Chastain may well have broken NASCAR as we know it. I'll explain. Let's get into it. All right, so first, let's watch this absolutely insane move. So Ross Chastain was out of the playoffs. Absolutely no chance of getting in. Oh, wait, there is. He wall rode out of a video game, literally a video game move, around the outside, passing Denny Hamlin for the final transfer spot into the final four to race for the NASCAR championship. Just listen to this throttle. He was wide open on the wall. So let's reiterate what I just said. I believe, and I I knew at the moment I saw it, this is the greatest moment in NASCAR history. Period. End of story. Almost nothing could top this, and I don't think anything will. Uh, This is something we're going to be telling our grandkids about. The day where we were, what we saw, the people who were there in the sold-out Martinsville crowd, they will talk about the day that Ross Chastain rode the wall. So why? When it's this great, incredible moment, are all the drivers and a lot of fans and a lot of media saying it never needs to happen again. In fact, Kyle Larson spoke to Matt Weaver after the race and said uh, pretty bluntly that it was embarrassing for the sport. Now, I think we need to establish first that I personally believe that Ross Chastain should not be penalized or disqualified after the race for making this move. Um There's really nothing in the NASCAR rulebook or any racing rulebook outside of the virtual world that says you can't make up an advantage by riding the wall. Like, no one ever, ever in the history of racing would have ever considered that a thing. I mean, most people, when you hit the wall on the last lap, you're J.R. Hildebrand, you lose the Indy 500. You know, these are not the sort of things that are supposed to work. In this case, it did. Now, I do think you're going to need a rule. There's going to be a need for a rule change because a lot of people have been saying this is a one in a million shot. I don't believe this is a one in a million shot. And as we get through this video, I'm going to kind of explain many of the reasons why it wasn't. I mean, at the end of the day, NASCAR has kind of created this situation uh, to occur or the ability for this situation to occur. And what's even crazier, I think, is that this move was not to win a race. This move was just for a chance to compete for a championship at Phoenix International Raceway. So I think we've kind of crossed the Rubicon a little bit. By we, I think we're kind of talking about NASCAR. Because at the end of the day, you heard the footage. And Ross Chastain himself after the race said, the way he pulled this move off was he let go of the, let go of the wheel and pinned the throttle. At the time, he sat, or right now, Ross Chastain, although it's an unofficial lap because it didn't happen in qualifying, and this is how records have always worked in in auto racing across the world. But what we have right now is Ross Chastain just went around Martinsville Speedway faster than any stock car in history by doing this. Two and a half seconds faster than the pole. So... (laughs) When we're talking about these sort of things, or he was two and a half seconds faster than Christopher Bell, the winner on the last lap. It wasn't two and a half seconds faster than the pole, but I think he was about a tenth of a second or a hundredth of a second faster than the outright track record at Martinsville. That is a the kind of advantage that race car drivers salivate and dream of getting. So when people say, no one else would ever be as crazy as Ross Chastain to try something like this. You're wrong. You've never met a race car driver in your life. You've never even been close to one. You've never probably even watched one on TV if, if you think that. When an advantage is found, no matter how dangerous, it is going to be exposed. And I, this is why I said that Ross Chastain might have broken NASCAR. I think at the very least, unless there's a role change, He's broken Martinsville because 
You don't think some crazy mofo is going to try it next year? When you're in a win and get in playoff system, especially at the, the fall Martinsville race, but even at the spring, someone who's fourth or fifth, let's say a guy takes a chance on a green white checker with old tires. Let's say it's uh, 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 Todd Gilliland, a guy who's got no chance of winning a race by himself on speed, but through strategy, he can kind of get up into the top 10. And let's say the green white checker happens and he's running about fifth, maybe two or three seconds behind the leaders. In turn four, what the hell do you think he's going to do? He is going to try that wall ride. And I think the one in a million shot that a lot of people are talking about could well be that Ross Chastain got through it without killing himself. I think it's certainly possible with the way NASCAR has designed their cars. They are extremely strong, um, too strong in some ways, as we found out at the rear of the car this year. Um, but they're extremely strong cars. They're not going to fall apart if you just get up against the wall and just rub along it, uh, or at least enough damage to disable them. Obviously, Ross Chastain essentially killed his car by doing this, and that's the price you pay, which is another thing that a lot of people are saying, well, yeah, if you if you do it, it's a one-time deal. But it's a one-time deal for that race. So on that last lap, Todd Gilwin's going up there. And probably five or six other guys are going to go up there. And when you got five or six guys who are going to ride the wall flat out, not even holding the steering wheel, guess how much that increases the danger factor. Maybe one guy doing it, the the chances of him snagging the, the, the access guard wall and being torn to pieces like Mike Harmon or Michael Waltrip were back in the day at Bristol, maybe low. When you send five or six cars at it, imagine if the first car doesn't get caught in the gate, but maybe pulls it back a little bit, and then the second car hits the gate, disintegrates, and then all the other cars crash into that. These are the situations that could happen, and that's why NASCAR is going to have to come up with a rule here. They have to, because if they don't, they're inviting a potential fatal crash because, again... When you put two and a half seconds, and now it's been proven that you can do it, you put a two and a half second advantage over one lap, the last lap, the one that pays, in front of these race car drivers, yeah, Kyle Larson may call it embarrassing, but he sure as hell is going to do it if he gets the opportunity, and he did it at Darlington, by the way. I think a lot of people are going to point that out or probably already have, but yeah, these drivers are going to want to protect themselves out of the car. When they're in the car... They're going balls out. And when you look at a situation like this, it's been proven that you can do it. Now people are going to do it. And now the onus is on NASCAR to protect the drivers from themselves. So what do you do? Well, obviously, you tell them not to do it anymore. You say, okay, it's kind of the Alex and Artie at Laguna Seca situation. Um, And if you're not aware, Alex and Artie made it one of the greatest passes of all time, very similar to Ross Chastain um, at the corkscrew at Laguna Seca. He did the video game move, which is he cut on the inside of the track, went across and threw the dirt uh, down the hill at Laguna Seca, got around Brian Herta and went on to win the race on the last lap. Similar situation here with Ross Chastain going around flat out on the wall in turn four at Martinsville. Um, but what cart who ran the IndyCar series at that time did was say, say in the driver's meeting the next year, you can't do that. And no one's really tried to do it since uh, though people have passed at the corkscrew. It's not quite as spectacular as what we saw with Alex and So that's the first thing they can do. Um, and I think that would probably be most effective. And if you really want to get something on the rules, maybe put a time limit on how many to- how long you can be on, on the wall, maybe kind of uh, base it off of Darlington, like how, how often are you touching that wall or homestead? You know, how much can you touch that wall or what's the longest length that someone who's not actively trying to take advantage of the wall can touch the wall without, uh, you know, putting too much danger into effect. And I, and I also, maybe if you, and here's the really stupid thing that may end up happening. If you really want to not write a rule, you could just take the crossover gate out of the wall. 
Um, but that being said, too, I think that would also be a problem because these next gen cars are built a lot more like open wheel cars. And if let's say you get into the wall like that, a tire comes off and then gets under that flat body of the next gen car, you're going up in the air and that potentially launches you into the fence. And at a track like Martinsville, people are pretty close to the fence. So that could be a problem. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's a good idea to just ban this wall riding outright. I think it needs to happen. Um but I'm curious because I think NASCAR fans are not going to take too kindly to this either. And I'm very interested whenever NASCAR does respond to this and based on what their response is, of course, will NASCAR fans accept it? I wonder because this is the si- sort of thing that I think NASCAR fans are going to go absolutely gaga for, which is I, I agree. <laughs> this was the greatest moment I've ever seen in a NASCAR race. But we also have to be mature adults here and acknowledge why it can't happen again. Appreciate it while it's here, but realize that was a step too far. And if they allow this to continue, well, boy, I can't, I can't, I can wait for the next Martinsville race. But uh, yeah, no, I'll tell you what, Ross Chastain just on intestinal fortitude alone is now my pick to win the championship at Phoenix because, frankly, he's earned it. (laughs) He's earned it. That was an earn. Um, But we we don't want to see anybody else in an earn, so I would prefer that uh, they make a rule saying, yeah, maybe don't do that anymore. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. Subscribe for more motorsport content, and I'll see you in the next video.